Good morning. My name is Kim Spiru. I'm with the Rotary Club of Essex, and with me is Father Stephen Amoa Giassi, who has come all the way from Ghana. Father Stephen is a gifted person who has become a trusted partner of Rotarians working in the central region of Ghana. And today, we're excited to present the next chapter of our Ghana story, which was truly inspired by the work of Godfrey and also Ron Arkell, who blazed trails for Rotarians like ourselves to follow. Through this tale of two teams, we hope to give you a sense of the continuing impact our Rotary efforts have had on improving the conditions for the people living in Ghana. Our teams raised a combined total of $347,000 in donations and grants. And we invested these funds very carefully in education, water, and health projects. Welcome to the central region of Ghana, where 80,000 people reside in 56 small villages. Most of the population lives in extreme poverty, and as Godfrey mentioned, many are subsistence farmers. The average family income is about $5 a week, and uh, many families, however, have no regular income at all. There's very little access to clean water, and as Godfrey poignantly indicated, many people cannot afford the cost of health care and die from preventable and treatable illnesses. Although Ghana is a democratic state, tribal governance is still quite prevalent, and the chiefs as owners of the land play a significant role in the day-to-day -day running of the region. So before commencing any of our projects, we had to go and meet with the chiefs, and it helped for us to... Uh, to grease their, uh, their welcome with a little bit of Canadian whiskey, and that ensured we got the go-ahead to do our projects. <laughs> now, recognizing that education is truly the, the key to breaking the cycle of poverty, our teams took on the renovation of two large schools, one located in the village of Nyan Kamasi and the other in the village of Asin Panaye. Both of these schools were in deplorable states when we... Uh, when we found them and began our extreme makeovers. The walls of the schools were caving in and the roofs leaked, which made the uh, education on rainy days almost impossible. Getting to school is difficult enough for these children without having to have the very building they're attempting to learn in hinder their efforts. So day by day, our teams transform these dilapidated buildings into bright, safe, clean learning environments for the 1,450 students attending these schools. And here are the finished products. We're really proud of those schools. To mark the successful completion of these schools, the villages held derbers in our honor, grand celebrations featuring traditional dancing, music, and an exchange of gifts. Following these derbers, our teams distributed backpacks to each student. The backpack contained great appropriate school supplies, new clothing, toiletries, and of course, a toy. The excitement at receiving these backpacks, I have to tell you, was overwhelming, and there were squeals of delight. All of the girls received little Africa dresses made out of pillowcases, and the boys loved their new hats, shirts, and shorts. As the picture shows, I think we've just discovered Africa's next top models. We also organized picture days at our new schools. Photographer Nicholas took photos of each individual student. We printed the photos at night and helped the children make frames for them out of popsicle sticks. The kids had a blast decorating their frames and really treasured their portraits. Now, after distributing the photos in one of the classrooms, there was one left over, and I asked the teacher if this little boy that was in the picture um, was absent because he was missing from the school. The teacher looked at me and said, this little one has passed. Not quite comprehending what he was trying to tell me, I asked where the little boy went, and the teacher said he died the previous night from malaria. Although that news was shocking, it was not a surprise, as malaria is Africa's number one killer. In fact, every 30 seconds, a child in Africa dies from malaria. It's a virulent killer, but it can be stopped. A simple $5 mosquito net can provide a barrier, thereby preventing the spread of this fatal disease. Our teams purchased 3,000 mosquito nets to pregnant nursing mothers and their children. And thanks to Rotary, these fortunate mothers that you see in this photo can put their babies to bed knowing they will be safe from the scourge of malaria. The healthcare professionals on our team, and there were many, worked at hospitals and at the Barracoo Clinic. 
which is run mostly by nurses and rarely has a doctor available. When the villagers learned that a Western doctor was at the clinic, they walked hours and waited patiently for the chance to be examined by Dr. Chris Spiru. Dr. Chris treated over a thousand patients, many of whom were suffering from malaria, diabetes, hypertension, bacterial infections, and waterborne illnesses. Prescription medications are very expensive and out of the reach of most patients who cannot afford the cost of state health care in Ghana. So knowing this, we brought 500 pounds of prescription medication valued at $50,000 and filled their pharmacies to the brim. The Barracu Clinic also lacked appropriate space to care for mothers and their babies. So in 2014, our team raised enough money to build them a brand new clinic. This clinic provides mothers and their children with regular checkups, vaccinations, vitamins, and disease prevention education in a modern facility with electricity, fans, and new equipment. Our nurses also had the opportunity to provide polio vaccines to children during a regional health fair we organized. We also set up eyeglass clinics, and we're blessed to have Dr. Tim Guthrie, an optometrist on our team, who examined hundreds of patients. We distributed 2,400 pairs of prescription lenses and 1,000 pairs of reading glasses to patients who attended the clinics. Now, tragically, every 21 seconds, a child somewhere in the world dies from a waterborne illness. Due to the lack of proper sanitation in the central region, water sources have become contaminated with human waste and also with poisonous residue from the nearby mining operations. Villagers there have to walk miles to access clean water for drinking, cooking, and bathing. Furthermore, this year, Ghana suffered a severe drought which made fresh water all the more scarce. To address this dire situation, our teams bore drilled water wells in 10 villages located throughout the central region. And at each well commissioning, it was really interesting, the communities didn't say thank you for the water or thank you for the well. Instead, they said thank you for the gift of life, for to them, water is life. Our teams were also able to raise enough money, and with the district's uh, grant, we raised enough money to build two public sanitation facilities featuring 26 flush toilets, sinks, and 10 public showers. Now, considering a toilet was Rotary's first public service project, I think Paul Harris would have been proud of us. With decreased access to continuing education beyond primary school, there is a large population of young people without many opportunities for employment or activity. And as in any community, this leads to an incidence of higher teen pregnancies, mischief, and crime. To address the situation, our teams built a youth center to provide these youngsters with a place to learn, meet, and develop in a safe environment. This youth center featured a gym, computer labs, classrooms, showers, and toilets, and this building has now become a community hub used by all the villagers for many different activities and recreational pursuits. And finally, I would like to share with you a story of baby Kwame Anka. He's a premature infant we encountered on our mission. His grandmother brought him into the clinic because he was failing to thrive. It turned out that this baby's mother was disabled, and so she was unable to nurse this little one. The grandmother had no money for formula, and so the baby was literally starving to death. There was nothing the nurses at the clinic could do, and I remember the nursing director saying to me, you know, Kim, we can't save everyone. Thankfully, we were there, though, at that moment, and we were able to intervene and take action on behalf of this little child. We rushed this baby to hospital, where he was given intravenous medication, hydration, and food. After two weeks in the hospital, we were able to reunite him with his mother, Rose, and provided his family with the funds needed to continue to care for him in the coming months. This is a picture of baby Kwame taken about two weeks ago. He is now seven months old and crawling. And when I see him this coming November on our next mission, he should be walking. He is truly a rotary miracle in the making. Now, on behalf of the people of Ghana, Father Stephen would like to take a moment to thank Super District 6400 for uh, the many years of support uh, for the people in Ghana. And after his uh, note of thanks, we have a little video a video message or thank you card that's been made for um, the children of Ghana to you. Thank you, Kim. All you have heard, all you have seen, do not capture the effect and the change 
in the new life given. I stand here as a testimony of this project, the effect of it, the life given, the change that has happened. I don't know what we would have done without District 6400. You have saved our life. You have made a difference. You are the best. Thank you.